Uh, let's bring you more now on our top story. How and where those two Islamic State fighters captured in Syria should face justice. Mohammed Fraser Rahim is executive director of Quilliam International, based in Washington. Um, Mohammed, many thanks for being with us. Um, we are, of course, in the early stages of this process. But in your mind, what is the most likely destination uh, for these two members of the Beatles? Guantanamo Bay seems to be getting mentioned an awful lot. Yes, I mean, last uh, month we saw that the, the State of the Union address, uh, President Trump mentioned that he wanted to keep Guantanamo Bay open. I mean, many people, Washington policy observers, we thought that potentially it was going to close, obviously, because the Obama administration was encouraging that. I think, quite frankly, it looks like because it, these individuals are in U.S. custody um, that likely this may be the uh, destination. But to be quite frank with you, I think as analysts, it would be great to see them go through the legal process and uh, go through this, this, this journey of being able to say, uh, be an example to say that you cannot kill innocent lives, that you cannot engage in terrorist actions, and that um, you will be uh, prosecuted by all the full elements of the law. I think that would send a message, um, quite frankly, rather than just, um, you know, putting them away in a jail cell um, that can be used quickly for propaganda use by groups like ISIS or what comes next. Indeed, and certainly many of those who've suffered at the hands of the Beatles, the families of, of some of their victims are calling for an open trial. But if we assume that they will spend some time at Guantanamo Bay, I mean, just how totemic uh, is that installation, that US government installation uh, for the more radical end of Islam? I mean, to what extent does Guantanamo Bay represent to radical Islamists, the very worst of the Western excesses? It feeds into that narrative that, one, the U.S. is certainly in this, quote-unquote, existential war against Islam, and that in some way there, be, there are human rights abuses that certainly are carried out there. So it feeds into this larger meta-narrative that we continuously hear from extremist groups in this propaganda machine that they're just out, uh, uh, they're putting out all throughout the world. So for, in many instances, we have to find a direct alternative. Um, to challenge that in a way where we're not feeding into that, whether it's an English language uh, publication or it's in another language in which they use the various forms to get out their message. Is there any element of rehabilitation in this process any longer? Listen, I used to be a counterterrorism analyst at the U.S. National Counterterrorism Center. I worked for over 10 years on this issue. I would have been one of those analysts ciphering through, trying to decide what do we do with this issue. I can tell you, quite frankly, I, was, I worked this, these problem sets, so I, I see it and I know it very firsthand. I think what we can do is get as much as intelligence information as possible. We can use that. Perhaps there's networks on the ground that we'll get from them. I can tell you you're dealing with some of the best uh, uh, folks who are on the ground and they're working this as we speak. And so we need to use this as an opportunity to gather information, see what's there, to then find ways to prevent attacks so that we don't have to deal with in any way uh, the follow on repercussions that will uh, see some attack in European or American soil as well. What, what then are the ramifications, the implications, in fact, of the, of the reports that the UK has withdrawn their citizenship? You know, I think it's still early to see what, you know, th th these are big question marks of, you know, what does that mean? I mean, that these, the citizenship was revoked by the Home Office. Certainly, uh, certainly it's, a, it's a legal quagmire. I think, quite frankly, um, whether the UK's revoked them or not, there are many other nations throughout the world that have take, taken individuals in uh, because of their revocation uh, a revoking of their citizenship. I mean, you, there are a number of locations in Africa, in the Middle East, Central Asia, that will certainly be probably open um, locations that, re that would receive them. Uh, it, it's a whole legal issue that I think uh, it won't be resolved overnight. This is something will take months, perhaps years, if, uh, if we don't address this head on as well. Mohammed Fraser Rahim, Executive Director of Quilliam International. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you very much.